Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about Oracle Cloud. In this video, we'll show how you can install WaringGuard. First question that I know that you're gonna ask is what is WaringGuard? WaringGuard is one of the applications that you can use as a VPN. And that's you're gonna ask Alan, what is VPN? VPN is a virtual private network. Basically, you make a tunnel between two devices. You make a direct connection and during this connection, it's encrypt all your data. Imagine that you have your phone and your phone you want to connect for public uh, Wi-Fi and that you want to look, search something on the internet, look for your Facebook or do some transactions in your bank account or anything. When you connect to your public network, you don't know what traffic they are controlling, what they are looking on this data. I know that nowadays a lot of websites has a HTTPS protocol where it has the SSL certification. But anyway, they can track some information that is not good for you. Using the VPN, you can connect your device directly to this instance, and then from this instance that you will connect to the internet. So all this traffic will be encrypted for a private key and a public key, and that's only the end user or end server that will have access for the internet. So your traffic is protected up to this stage. Don't worry, I will explain a little bit more about Warning Guard and that may make more sense for you. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and let's do it. Okay, before we start to show how to do the installation, let's go to the base and understand what is Warning Guard. WaringGuard is a fast, modern, security VPN tunnel. What this means? It means that uh, through the cryptography, they create a tunnel between your device and your server. This tunnel is using a private key and a public key. And with a simple coding, they get your speed quite well. I don't say that this wiring guard is the only option for VPN, but in my view, it's one of the fastest one. In a future video, I intend to show what's the difference between the open VPN and the wiring guard. But let's try to understand first how to install the wiring guard. As well, wiring guard promise for you a high performance with a low requirement for the system. It means that different for the open VPN, you don't need to have a really powerful system to run quite well. Of course, all the time that you're gonna use a VPN will have a drop of speed and will have a increase of latency because basically it's not going from your device directly to the internet, but to go to your device, to the server where you set up the wiring guard and from the server, then we'll go to the internet. Have this one in mind, now we can come in our virtual machine that we create in our instance of Oracle Cloud. Here uh, I'm using a uh, Ubuntu as operating system and I have only one core 408 megabytes of uh, internet and one gigabyte of run. So we'll have a little bit limited. I try to use this initial system only to try how fast is it and how will be working more or less. I will try to put in my internet, my phone later and try to connect it and compare the speed between uh, wiring guard activated and wiring guard not activated at all. Before we start to do any setup and open our SSH and start to set up our system, we need to open some ports. The only port that we need to open is the port 5180. So I come here, here I open my subnet and my default security list. And what port that we need to set up is this one. If I put it, I need to set up port 51820. Protocol that will be set this port will be UDP. Don't try to do TCP because it will not work at all. And then the source, I put all the source. If you want to limit it only for that specific machine, okay, it's fine. You can put the correctly source that you want. And uh, the description I put wiring guard, you can leave empty, but I only put wiring guard for know what I'm doing. Have this one, I can come back in my instance and open my put and start to set up my connection. To set up my connection, I will need to put my user that I'm using. In my case, I'm using the Ubuntu server, so my user will be Ubuntu. As well, my IP address that I'm using, and here don't forget to add your privacy key. Otherwise, you're not allowed you to access your server. So have everything set up. I come here, open. First time that I open my machine, there will appear this message. I can go yes. And now I have my server open. 
Okay, I just opened my page. Here it's my usage. This machine has been created, so I will not be able to show how you can do using the Pi hole, the same thing that I showed in the last video, but I will explain the principle, how you need to do what the NAS direction that you need to put when you are doing the installation. First thing, let's look as a root. So sudo sum, sudo sum, and now we are root. We can clear this page and that we're gonna run apt get update for we update our list. So this one, they will download all the information and see everything that needed to be updated. Okay, once that appeared, this message that it's done the update, so we're gonna run upgrade. Remember, this second stage will take a little bit longer because it will do upgrade all our system. When they ask, you are sure that you want to continue, put yes, enter, and we're gonna wait. I think that will take around five minutes, so we come back in some minutes. Once that appears that the upgrade has been complete, we can clear our page, and that's now we can start to the installation for the wiring guard. To do the installation for wiring guard is really simple. We're gonna use this code cur l https install pyvpn.io slash bash. You're gonna ask Alan, it's not the same uh, installation steps that you're gonna do if you want to install in a Raspberry Pi, and I say yes, exactly the same, but work well, so why not use the same? And if work, for ARM and work for ADM system, 8664 bits, why not use the same system? It's only save time and it's great. So we're gonna run this step and that's, uh, we're gonna see what's the next step that is required. Automate installation. This installer will transform your Raspberry Pi into a OpenVPN or a WiringGuard server. Don't worry, it's work for 64, 86 bits and a ARM system. I'm only using this Raspberry Pi script because it's really easy and work really well, so why not use it? You always can install the Docker. Inside the Docker, you can install this application, WiringGuard OpenVPN, or you can install directly in Ubuntu. But why do it if this system work much better and easy? So let's do this way. We're gonna put enter and they ask, you need to set up a static IP. Why they ask it? Imagine that you set up that to, the IP for this VPN will be 11111. In the field, they will change for 22222. And that's uh, you try to access 1111 and they don't find any server because your IP address change. So to avoid it, it's, it's interesting to have a static IP. But don't worry, because we are installed in a instance of Oracle, they never change the IP address. Once that you create this instance, they will be permanently this IP address until you decide to delete this instance and create another one. Once you do it, yes, of course, the IP address will change, but until it happens, it will be always the same IP address. So you don't need to worry about, uh, let's set up a, a dynamic DNS or let's uh, try to set up a static IP because they read static IP. So we can put enter and they will appear this information. One thing that's interesting that I didn't realize, they say that Amazon, you need to configure it a static IP always or a set a Elastic IP. So I think that they looking for this installation when you are trying to install the AWS. So I presume that if you want to install in any VPS, not necessarily only Oracle Cloud, but if you want to install in most of VPS, this installation will work without problem, as long as you set up the correct ports to be open or close. So we come here and put OK. And they say that uh, now we can start to install the local user. Remember, if I'm using the Oracle Linux, you need to put OPC. If you're using the Ubuntu, you need to put Ubuntu. So we can select here and put space and enter. Now they will ask what mode that you can install. In this video, we're gonna install OneGuard. Next video, we're gonna install OpenVPN. Will be really simple, really similar, but will be a little bit different. OneGuard, you can have the key code and the OpenVPN, no, you need to have the properly private key to be able to add in your user. So let's go for OneGuard first and we're gonna put enter, and now they ask the port that you want to allow the access. Remember, if I'm using the standard port 51820, I don't need to change it, I already allowed it to the access, and you're gonna ask, Alan, it's not dangerous to allow the, always this port, because everyone knows that if you have wiring guard, you are using this port. And I say yes and no. Only way that you can access your wiring guard is to have the private key and public key. Without this one, you can try to access it and it will not work. Of course, if the wiring guard stops to work and if the door is open, 
you always have option for someone to try to access it. But if they have the IP address and try to scan all the ports that will be open, they can find the next port that you define for Vanguard, so it will not change so much. So in this way, we're gonna leave this standard because don't see the reason to change. So we can put enter and they ask, you are sure that you want to set up here? Yes, I want. And now it's the time that you define the DNS to search. Remember that I told that if you have Pyho installed in the system, you can use one guard plus the Pyho. Yes, this way you can come here down, down, down. And you can see Pyho is a local DNS. Yes, if you select this option, it means that you're using the Pyho as a DNS provider. The Pyho will block the add-ons that you don't want. And when you connect for the wiring guard, you don't need to do anything else. They already go wiring guard, Pyho, internet. So you're gonna have ad block integrate for this system. But in our case, because I did install the Pyho initially, I will come here in my Cloudflare because it's one of the applications that I like more and I will put enter. Now they ask what IP address that you want to set up. Remember, if you're using dynamic DNS, if you're using a machine that change all time your IP address, Yes, you need to set up a dynamic DNS. You can use the Doc DNS or Cloudflare to set up a dynamic DNS. With this dynamic DNS, you come here in the DNS and that you set up your IP address and that's all the time that change will change its IP address. But in my case, because it's Oracle Cloud and this one and my instance will never change my IP address, so I'm totally confident to leave this IP address. It's only simple, less complication, less application, less things to uh, consume power of my machine. So I can come here and put enter. Now they will generate my keys. I can put enter again. You want to set up unattended updates? Yes, I want to set up this unattended update. I want to allow it because if uh, they release a new update and they don't follow periodic all the updates, my machine could be in risk for an invasion. So it's better to do it. But of course, it's not perfectly. You need to set up a periodic reboot it's simple to do, but if you want, it's better to do a periodic reboot look like once a week or once a month to do it, or you can do manually, depend your needs. So I come here and put OK, and they will say, you want to do it? Yes, I want to do it. They say it's all done, installation complete. For you add a user, you need to go PyVPN add, or if you want more help, you go PyVPN help. Obvious, no? And then uh, you can start to set up your users. So let's put OK and they ask, you want to reboot your system? I suggest you to reboot in this stage, but because I'm only showing you guys, I don't need to reboot it because I don't want to lose this time. So it's totally fine for me. I put no, and now I just finished to install my wiring guard. For I add my first user, first I will clean my page, and now I put pi vpn add. And now they ask what user that you want to add. My case will be cyberlab, and I put enter. Now I just created my user server lab. So I can check my user. I can come here in pi VPN QR code. But before I do it, I will reduce the size of my letter because last time that I tried to do it with this size 24, they didn't work. So I come here and I will reduce the size for 20. At least my QR code will appear. I put apply. So now I can put pi VPN QR code and put enter. Now I have my user client server lab. I put one and enter and here my cache code. I will put a little bit up for be able to copy all my cache code. Now I can come in my phone and try to add my wiring guard. To add my wiring guard is really simple. Hits the page for the wiring guard. I put add, scan for cache code and I select it. Uh, it's because it's a big cache code and it should go really back in my phone, but it's fine. Sauber lab and I put save. And if I open my configuration, he is not activated yet. I have my public key here, my public key for the user, and here my IP address. So let's try to see if it's working. I can see that I have a receive date and a send date. If they don't appear this both field as a receive and send date, it means that it has not been connected properly. You need to review the ports that you did set up properly. If they only appear send data, it means that nothing's receiving, so something's wrong. If I open up the speed test, they already appear that Oracle Cloud is my provider, so I can come here and put search internet. They will take a little bit until they start, and let's see, I have a ping of uh, 90 milliseconds, and my speed will be around, let's see. Yes, just confirm my 
ping will be 90 milliseconds. I have a download of 42.9 and my upload for 43.8. But uh, what represent it for myself? Because I don't know my initial speed of internet. So now I will deactivate my wiring guard and try to run this speed test the same way. Okay, I just deactivate my wiring guard so I don't have any VPN connection. I only connect to the Wi-Fi. So now I can check my speed. What I'm using, I'm using the Vodafone. So I will go here and put go and let's see what results that I have. So now I have my results. I can see that uh, my ping is 30 milliseconds. My download speed is 253 and my upload speed is 224. So we'll put on the screen in my right side will be my wiring guard activate and my left side will be the wiring guard disactivate. In this way, you can have an idea what's the drop speed. But let's see what it's the performance of my server. If I open here my instance again and come here for the metrics, I can see what was my bottleneck. And for me, it don't seem that I have any bottleneck because my CPU was not used 100%. My memory utilization was not using 100% as well. And my disk writing, nothing was used in my 100%. So I don't understand what it's the bottleneck for this wiring guard. So guys, I hope that you like this video. Remember, this wiring guard is really useful if you want to simulate that you are in that network or at least protect your traffic or protect what you are doing if you are using the public network. If you like this video and you think that you're gonna apply for yourself, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel. See you next time. Bye.